kwako mwenyezi amenifanya jinsi nilivyo pumzi yako uhai wangu umefufua mifupa mikavu uhai umeni baba yangu umetuliza dhoruba wakati wa mwimbi moyo wangu na ukuinue kila wakati nafsi yangu ikuhimidi kila saa
Bwana hatutaweza Niposa tunakualika Roho Mtakatifu uende nasi Sisi ni watu wa shingo Mungu tusamee Bwana Tunahitaji neema yako Bwana Naomba uwepo wako uende nasi Ewe Bwana wa majeshi tusikie Kama uwe ni nasi hatutaki kutoka
here to bring the sermon of the day. My name is Pastor Gerard Mogimurito. I'm born again, love Jesus as my personal savior. I thank God because of the, the chance I've been given by the, the church, full gospel of Kenya. I appreciate the chance I've been accorded by the church, Vicar Central of Church Assembly. I would like that we pray as we continue with the sermon. Let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you this hour because of giving us opportunity to hear your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to understand your word and God as, to, as we go through the, the sermon. May your word help us to understand your will in our lives. We pray, believe in trusting in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brethren. It's another chance God has given unto us so that we may hear his word. Uh, guiding and governing our lives in the name of Jesus. Today, I will take you through the kingdom prayer and the intercession. Uh, Jesus Christ himself, uh, our Savior, talked much about prayer. He also taught his disciples about prayer. Also, the disciples requested to know about prayer because what Jesus did while he was here on earth is because he prayed and also the church of the day was birthed through prayer that the early church uh, was birthed uh, by the power of prayer I would like to read the word of God in the book of Luke chapter 18 uh, from verse 1 uh, it's a parable of a persistent widow Jesus himself gave this parable and I would like to read. Kindly take your book or your notebook and the Bible so that when we, we are reading or I am reading, you can also take some notes in the name of Jesus. I believe God you bless us all. I thought from verse 1 it says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither, who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a window in that town who kept uh, coming to him with a plea, gladly justice against my adversary. It continued down there. But Jesus started by telling the disciples that they should always pray and never give up. Meaning there are two issues. We should always pray. That is one. Sometimes we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, and it comes a position, a point, where we give up. Could be we are praying for a, an issue, a disease, or a, a situation we, are, we, may find, we may find ourselves in. And because we are human beings, Sometimes we get exhausted, we give up, and the, the, the continuity of praying comes to an end. So Jesus told, told his disciples, you should always pray and never give up. So he gave a parable uh, so that the, the disciples and us as a church can understand why we should never give up praying. Kingdom prayer and intercession it's because we want to fulfill our spiritual calling and destiny. Our spiritual calling must be fulfilled through kingdom prayer and intercession and also our destiny. So once we don't pray always, once we give up praying, we, we may not be able to fulfill our spiritual calling and also we will not reach our destiny. So Jesus himself was very concerned about our spiritual calling and also our destiny. Many have been called. Many people sometimes they are called, but along the way they give up. They give up their spiritual calling. So somebody will tell you, I was born again, I was a Christian, I was a believer, but after some times you find that group or individual, they are no longer believing God, they are no longer committed to God. Because they failed 
this issue of always praying and never giving up. So Jesus was very keen to tell his disciples that they should always pray. I don't know how, my, how many times you pray a day, or how, how many times you have given up. Now, I want to say this. It's not this, uh, there's different difference between saying prayers and praying, and also a kind of repetition. Sometimes people repeat a certain prayer. I'm saying going before the Lord with our needs, with our request, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And by so doing, God answers our prayer. God help us to fulfill our spiritual calling in the name of Jesus. So, there are several things that, that we should understand about our spiritual calling and our destiny. One, we should make uh, our prayer a priority. Making it a priority in our lives, every day. And I know uh, why we don't pray always, or we give up, is because we don't uh, make it a priority. We prioritize other items in life. Looking for money, getting education, getting family, doing business, and our mind are on that road whereby we prioritize other items each day. But when we make it a priority, as number one, to pray, we never cease praying. So uh, it's good to understand uh, we make it a priority to pray in our lives. Number two, we understand God's purpose for prayer. What's the purpose for us to pray? Number three, God's profession for prayer. Number four, God's power through prayer. And number five, our privilege to partner with God through prayer. So brethren, I would like that we look First, number one, the, the priority of prayer. As I've said before, we should always pray and never give up. And from the text we have read about the window, and Jesus told his disciples they should always pray and should never give up. It's because he wanted them to understand that they make it a priority in their life. So I'll take you through number one, or part one, the priority of prayer. Why must prayer be a priority in our lives and in our congregation? One, we are commanded to pray. The book of uh, 1 Chronicles 16 verse 11 says, Look to the Lord and his strength and seek his face always. That look to the Lord and his strength and seek his face always. It's good to look to the Lord and, in, and He is our strength. Praying needs strength. Prayer needs to, 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 to not, we, 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 we should pray always. Number two, don't begin with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't a, 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 isn't a cat and mouse, hidden, sick game we are in. We, there's no bargain because we make it a priority. Number three, the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, And I pray in you know, the spirit in you know, occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Meaning, we keep on praying for ourselves, for our needs, for the church, for the saints, for our families. So there is a lot to pray for. Uh, number four, Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 says, But when you pray, go into a room, close the door, and pray to your father, who is unseen. Then your father, who sees you, what is done in secret, will reward you. You know, God sees us in our secrecy. And so, he also answers. Brethren, when you make it a, a, a prayer, prayer, it's because God has commanded us that you should pray. And when there is a command, we need to obey that command. Number two, Jesus is our example. We follow in the footsteps of Jesus. What he did, that's why we are Christians. We are Christ-like. 
What, what, Jesus, what was the lifestyle of Jesus? Himself he could pray. So Jesus is our example. He, he could always pray. In the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. You see, very early in the morning, it was his, you see, it was his uh, ideal point. It was a habit for him to pray every morning. While it was dark, he could wake up and go and pray. And because he wanted to set a place for us. So he is a good example. Number two, after leaving them, he went up on a mountain side to pray. Many times he could leave his disciples and he could go and pray. Why? Jesus himself was God. He was from above. He was defined. And he could pray himself. He could pray for us. He could pray. That's why his life was full of miracles. He could heal sick. He could raise the dead. He could feed many people because he was praying to the Father. And also, uh, number three says, uh, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 says, In his life on earth, Jesus made his prayer and request with loud cries and tears to God who could save him from death because he was humble and devoted to God and God had him. It, in his life on earth, while he was not on earth like us, he could pray with the Lord Christ who could save him from death. And because he was humble, this call for humility, we go before the Lord with humility, as Jesus did. And because of that, God had him. Praise the name of the Lord. So number two is that God is our example. And God being our good example, he made prayer a priority for his father. And also we should do the same. Make it a priority to pray to God our father. Number three, why make it a priority? The early church demonstrated the kingdom of prayer. We are, we are no less ex ex exempt from prayer. The early church prayed, as I said before, the church of the day was birthed through prayer of the disciples. So the early church prayed. And uh, actually in the book of Acts, it outlines how the church prayed. So they made it a priority in their lives. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 14 says, They are joined together, concentrated in prayer, along with women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So they joined together and they prayed. That is the early church. Number two in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42 says, They devoted themselves to apostles teaching and to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. These are the disciples. I'm talking about the early church. How the early church uh, demonstrated kingdom prayer. They often prayed. And now actually, as you could see the book of Acts and the early church, miracle happened at their time. Why there is no miracles today? Because somehow we pray and then we don't pray always. Or sometimes we give up. And number three, we don't make it a priority in our lives, even in our congregations. We pray for some time. We pray for some issues. We pray for healing. We pray for funds. We pray for education, we pray for marriage, we pray for family issues. And when God answers answer us, sometimes we forget the continuity of prayers. An example of some uh, the children of Israel, sometimes they prayed while they were in the wilderness. They prayed, but after sometimes they ceased prayers or they could not continue the prayers. If you could read the book of Exodus chapter number 3, whereby they prayed, and God sent Moses, and they were rescued from the slavery, the yoke of slavery. But they, when they went to the wilderness, they started complaining, they were murmuring, they could no longer pray. They could complain to Moses, 
And then uh, they spent a lot of years, 40 years in the wilderness. I believe, I believe, I pray that God will help us to understand why we make it a priority to pray each day. Not like the people or the children of Israel. Sometimes they could not pray. They could go to other issues. They could sin before God. It's because they could not pray always. Uh, number four, why make it a priority in our lives? It's because our nation is in crisis at, at all levels. When you look at our, at our nation, in our country, and also worldwide, we are at crisis at all levels. We are in crisis. Kingdom praying addresses situations that no political power is capable of doing. Very important. So with that understanding, I cannot cease to pray for our nation. I cannot cease to pray for our leaders at, at all levels. Praise the name of the Lord. Our nation needs us. And I really thank God for our leaders. Many times I come together and call church leaders to pray for the nation. That is one. So occasionally they pray. But the Bible says we should be praying always, at all times. Not only when we are called by our leaders to pray. When we are at your home or when we meet the churches, it's good we pray for our nation because uh, of crisis. Kingdom praying, I say, addresses situations, different situations. Instead of complaining and murmuring and, being, and uh, blaming one another, prayer answer our, 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 our request and God help us. The book of First Timothy, chapter number 2, verse 1 and 2 says, I urge you then, first of all, that request, prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For kings and nobles in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet life in our godliness and holiness. Paul was telling Timothy that for even kings, they need prayers. Those in authority that we may have peace for us to have peace in our country is because of praying for our leaders. And also, uh, we, live, we have a quiet life in all godliness and holiness in the name of Jesus. Number two about nation is that in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter number 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will I forgive their sin and heal their Lord. Yes, we cannot ignore this portion that when people who are called by my name, they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. So, brothers, let me make it a priority, pray for our nation. Uh, number five is about a spiritual wake up call. I know we, we all normally pray, but I want to encourage you that we make it a priority to pray. Number five, there is a spiritual wake up call. I know for some time we, 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 like, we sleep, we are no longer there. But we make it a call, make a, make, make a call to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, because God is faithful and He's loved us, we make it a prayer to pray. One of the things I love of God is that He is always together with us. He has promised us, I will be with you. Always. God is always there for us. God is always there in the morning, at night. He is always together with us. That's what he told Moses. That's what he told Abraham. 
I'll be with you always. That's what he told Joshua, Joshua 1. That as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. If God has committed himself that he'll be with us, why not ourselves make it a priority that we be with our God each day in the name of Jesus? You see, when he was ascending in heaven, he told his disciples, I'll be with you to the very end of the age. And God is faithful. He has promised us to be with us. So our God is there for us. Let us be there for our God. Let us be there in the morning. Make it a priority uh, to go before the Lord and pray. Is it it's good to understand ourselves? Who are we? If God is on our side, He always listens to us. God is faithful. There is a text I love reading about the chosen people of God in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Uh, it says, We are holy people called to the Lord. We are called by God. Number two, God has chosen us for Himself. God has called you. God has chosen you for Himself. So, making it a priority is because uh, God wants us to be holy always. And because of going before the Lord, we make, we cleanse our, we cleanse our life. And also, we are chosen. Number three, we are special people, treasure for God. We are special people before the Lord. When we appear before the Lord, it's because we are special. Number four, God keeps his covenant. He, he keeps his own. When he has promised us, he will be with us. Even now, God is with you. God is with our country. God is our nation. Is with our nation. God is with our, is looking at our at our at our situation because He is together with us. Number five, God is faithful and He keep His covenant. Always God keep His word. And one thing I love of God is that He is faithful and He always follow His word to fulfill it in our life. So fulfilling uh, our spiritual calling is because first our God is faithful. To reach our destiny is because we connect ourselves with God. So brethren, let us make a priority to always pray for God in the name of Jesus. Remembering we are special people. We are called by God and God always keep his covenant. Let us keep, let us keep our covenant with God. Because he has called us. The people of Israel, many times they could not keep their covenant with God. But God was faithful. He could send he, the, prophet, the, the prophets to wake up from their sleep. And also God is telling us today. I know there are many challenges you are going individually and collectively. And the church in a family circle, in our business. There are many issues underneath. But for us to succeed, for us to fulfill our spiritual calling and our destiny is when we wake up and, and pray and make it a priority. I would love that I end there, part one of Kingdom Prayer at intercession, fulfilling our spiritual calling and destiny. Uh, part one is about making uh, a priority uh, the age of prayer. That we have answered why must we pray or why must a prayer be a priority in our lives and in our congregation in the name of Jesus. I believe God will help you to wake up and make it a priority in your life and make it a priority in my life concerning the issues surrounding me, concerning the issues surrounding our situation, our, our nation, our families, our business and God is faithful because uh, sometimes we are limited. To break the limitations is because of prayers in the name of Jesus. So, brethren, sir, I love to end there in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.
Oh, yeah, yeah.